We're speaking with Antonio Swad, the man labeled by industry colleagues as a marketing genius because of his work with Pizza Patron. He's one of the Food Channel Pros, leaders with guts. Antonio, what's your opinion of the new immigration law that was just signed into law in Arizona? Well, you know, that hits pretty close to home. We have a significant number of stores in, in Arizona, uh, and I've seen those stores suffer, and I think it's directly tied to uh, the new law that's in effect. Um, you know, it's a sort of a double whammy for Pizza Patron. Our core customer and our entire brand focus is service to the Hispanic community. Uh, I can tell you uh, from talking to our partners out there and talking to some of our customers, it, it, it's not business as usual. Business is suffering. Our business is down. I think the same uh, a little bit uh, in Las Vegas as well. Those are the only two markets that I think we are really directly impacted, but uh, it's hurt all businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, if you looked at it just from an economic, let's say you, 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 you took everything else out of the equation. It's strictly an economic issue. I can remember when we were developing stores in Phoenix, I would go into neighborhoods, they were bustling, they were vibrant, they were alive. There were shopping centers and I would look at that and I'd say, I wish we could find a space and be in that center. I go back to that same area today, it's dead, the shopping center has a fence around it, or there's one or two tenants left. It's a direct result of the, of the climate th that has been developed with respect to the Hispanic community in Arizona. And I, th I think eventually uh, everybody's going to be able to see this. If nothing else, see it as an economic issue. If it's bad for business, and it's going to be bad for the people of Arizona. How do you feel about the menu labeling that's going to go into effect in 2011? You know, I, I'm, I'm wondering how that's going to uh, going to play out. Um, it, it, a lot of the stuff that we're seeing, you know, the health care and the menu labeling and that sort of thing that's sort of coming down the line, I, I'm curious to see how that's going to be applied. You know, if, if, if that is applied equally to everyone, where I find that my franchisees and, and my company is not disadvantaged and we're, we're on the same even playing field, that makes it a, that makes it a lot easier to tolerate. Uh, but if it's there's some sort of a means testing or something that allows some people have to comply and other people are exempt, that's going to be a problem for me. I, I tell you this, when you start reading uh, menu labels and you see uh, you know, actually what's in the food and particularly the caloric content in some of the food, I think we're all going to get a lot thinner real soon. <laughs> So you're, you've got a, a real, you've got an open mind about all this. Yeah, I, I sure do. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, but I'm, I'm going to watch very carefully to be sure that uh, it's applied uh, evenly. How do you inspire and engage your employees to want to make a career in the food service industry as opposed to just passing through? You know, I try to, um, I try to tell them what I believe, and, and here's what I believe about that. You know, I could have had another career. I could have been in anything else, uh, well, anything that I could do. But to me, working in the restaurant industry is, is sort of a high calling. I mean, I don't sell you something that you drive or a house that you live in. I'm responsible for preparing something that you put inside your body, you put inside the body of your children, and you need it to live. I'm charged with that responsibility. I have to make it safely. I have to produce it in a way that you like it. It has to be consistent. I take raw products in the back door of our restaurant when we, through this process, we do something to it and we ultimately retail it out the front to the end user. There aren't a lot of industries that offer that kind of challenges. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunities to drop the ball. You just have to learn to embrace those op those opportunities and enjoy the challenge. I think it's a I think it's a great industry, and if people would just sit down and think about it, it's important work as well. Mm -hmm. Look in your crystal ball a little bit and tell me: Do you think the Great Recession, the worst of it, is over, or do you see it hanging on and hanging on and hanging on? Well, I'd like to really be optimistic about this, but I think the thing that uh, we have hanging over our heads right now is people are afraid about losing their job and many of us live very close anyway and it, to the, the thought of losing your job is one of the things that helps you decide uh, whether or not you're going to 
go out into a restaurant and spend money rather than try to find a cheaper way. As the economy has gotten a little sour, we've caught people actually on the way down, people that used to go out into casual dining or whatever. We're very value-oriented, and uh, that's helped us catch people on the way down. By the same token, we've lost some people that have dropped out of the bottom as well, where a pizza a week or two pizzas a week is, is now out of, out of the question. I think for a while, uh, restaurant operators enjoyed um, lower commodity cost that really helped offset the lower customer counts. But I think we're seeing commodity cost rise. We still don't have the traffic in the restaurants back, so it's sort of the perfect storm, uh, double whammy, and I, it, it's, it's going to be tight. The good news about all this is the strong uh, operators uh, find a way to get stronger, we get smarter, and the weak operators find another career. What do you think is the biggest challenge that's going to be facing the restaurant industry in the next decade? <clears throat> You know, I think one of the biggest challenges is getting the, the government, even at the local level, to understand that it's business that makes the world go around. It's business that pays people. It's businesses that pay taxes. Let me give you an example what we're seeing. Even at the local level, the city level, what used to be allowed to do in terms of promoting your business, a shaker board, for example, a very simple, effective marketing tool. That used to be allowed. Not a big deal. You send an employee out there with a shaker board that suggests an offer. Many people don't make their food decision until very late in the evening of what they're going to have for dinner. Shaker board is very effective. We're seeing now the cities cracking down on that. Uh, I, I just don't know that, that people in government at all levels understand how important it is to support local businesses. So I think one of the biggest challenges is our own government, quite honestly. And what do you think um, the restaurant industry as a whole needs to do more of than it has in the past? You know, um, we need to find a way to create value in people's minds instead of just finding a way to creatively discount our food. And there's a difference. You know, I, I don't know that... Um, we've got a handle on that. You know, that's one of the things we talk about around here. How can we create value? Not how we can just accept less margin. You know, it's, that's the easy solution. But if we can create value and in, in the same time raise our sales, because we've done a good job of that, have a better offer for our customer and still have more top dollars to work with on the business side, I think that's, what, that's the kind of thing we need to be thinking about instead of just trying to uh, uh, cut portions, use, use less expensive ingredients, uh, and discount more than the next guy and figure out and worry about surviving the discounts later. I think we could do better than that. I think that's a conversation that's happening in all segments in the restaurant industry right now. We're talking with Antonio Swad of Pizza Patron. Check out the next part of this series as we explore what it takes to be a leader with guts. For Food Channel Pro, I'm Ellen Kodiff.